Cheers, and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, yes, we're doing all kinds of glycol chilling. Or you can do an ice bath or ice pump, whatever you wanna do through the coils, stuff like that. But I've got lots of information for you. We're gonna cover lots of details. I'm gonna tell you what I would recommend. It just makes sense. I mean, it's like a $10 difference. So spend the 10 bucks and do it right and have the ability to fall back. But we'll also talk about the Fermonster over here. That's a comparable system that is comparable. It's not the same. It is comparable, but it is definitely not the same. So cheers. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Come on, the like button still, click, make it black. There we go. And I think the subscribe button moved. It says subscribed, cool. You're awesome, I appreciate it. So first things first, you're gonna notice one of my all-rounders is a little taller than my other all-rounder. That means you haven't seen the reviews that I've done. It's like one of the biggest videos on this channel. I mean, you go to Kegland, you look up all-rounder, the video is right there. The reason being, is I haven't been stacking mine like that. I don't know, probably after a month when I bought the first one, I flipped this over. It takes less space if you're putting it inside of a fermenter and it just takes less space. Now, you'll also notice that I took the straps off. I'm gonna try to ferment without the straps. It's gonna be a small scare for me. But the reason, I live in Florida and when you're doing glycol or chilling like that, you create a lot of condensation and these things, I'm gonna reach out to Kegland and see if they wanna come up with another product. They seem to love inventing products and some of their products are just really astounding. This one I don't ever think was thought out for glycol in a hot humidity temperature. It's like a mold attractor, it attracts mold. So I'm taking these off and I've washed them really good, sterile, pretty much sterilized them, sanitized them as best I could, ran them through a Lysol cleaner at like insane temps. I'm impressed the plastic held up. So that's saying a lot too for the Firmzilla. This plastic, high heat in my wash machine and then low heat in my dryer. But yeah, they came out great and they're clean. They smell good, I'm not worried about mold, but because it's a type of cloth, the mold adheres to it really well. So if you're gonna do glycol chilling, you may want to refrain from putting the straps on your Firmzilla all-rounder. If you've got some way to keep the mold away and it never hits you, then great. But for me, I live in Florida, it's like everywhere. So we have to be very aware and be very careful. Now, I have one here that's all decked out. Yes, and I have a Fermonster over here. Now the Fermonster's all decked out, but doesn't do pressure fermenting. And we've got some issues over here with pressure fermenting that I wanna make you aware of. And that way you won't have the problem I had with one of mine, technically with both, but at least with one of mine. We're gonna go over price. So, and the price is gonna go up between 203 to $283 total. That includes the fermenter, okay? So that's not just the glycol setup, that's everything. This bad boy over here, which does not do pressure fermentation, was sitting at 171 or less based on what you were buying and how you were doing it. But it is an option. And if you're wondering about that, I'll put the link over, I think it's over here, or somewhere over here, whatever, it'll be on the side. You can go to that link, you can check out the Fermonster that I turned into a fermenting beast and very inexpensive fermenter. So I like to have options and that's why I have multiple fermenters. Now, the Firmzilla All-Rounder, hands down, is probably my favorite fermenter for too many reasons. One, it can do pressure, it can do non-pressure. I can shove my whole hand in there to clean it I mean, this thing checks a lot of those boxes, but honestly, the Fermonster, I like it, but this is even harder, this plastic, because it's designed for pressure. So it's a little more durable in my eyes, and it's just, it's gonna cost you a little more, but it does more. So it is, and that's another reason I bought two of them. I love these things. So right off the bat, let's go into costs, okay? Costs, this thing, and I'm gonna have a wide range on costs, and you're gonna be like, I think I saw it for under 72, but I'm quoting pricing that you can go to morebeer.com or other places, but more beer is where I bought the majority of these. And you go to more beer, this is gonna cost you 70. Like I said, I swear I've seen it for 59 at one time, but 70 to $150. And it's a 7.9, this is only six gallon. This is 7.9, so that's another thing too. Keep in mind, it's a bigger fermenter. You can do more beer in here, more beer. Eh. Little pun, wasn't intended, but hey, it's cute. Okay, so you're gonna be 70 for just the all-rounder. It's gonna go up based on options. Options being the straps. 
the it's usually right here yeah here it is i don't need it as much but yeah if you don't have one you're going to need to buy one this thing is to open the lids when for some reason you splash a little wart and it got sticky and you can't open it and it just will not come open no matter what you're doing yeah use something like this it's a lot safer than spilling all your finished beer somewhere because you decided to be you know hercules and rip the top off or something stupid so yeah 70 to 150 based on options and that 150 i think also includes the the spunning valve and the floating dip tube like i said it, it comes with everything up at that higher price point so and prices do change welcome to our economy world economy pre-drilled lid that's where i'm telling you to spend the ten dollars okay this is the lid that comes with it i like this lid it's great it works for pressure it works for non-pressure and it doesn't work for the glycol setup unless you drill the holes now if you just like to drill holes on more beer this is very very cheap yeah it is a step drill bit and this thing will do you justice you're going to need i think it's 12 yeah 12 millimeters for your thermal well and you're going to need 20 millimeters for your actual firmzilla twister or kegland temp twister coil cooling coil there we go if i can spit all those words out so yeah you can drill the holes if you really want to and this is kind of hard plastic instead of thin plastic like that so you're probably going to need some pilot holes just to make sure you got it centered over here i just kind of dug a little spot and then drilled in the plastic's much thinner so there's some there's some reasoning for the pricing like i said much much different equipment now i put that on there it's all great and yes you can see i took the little valve out yeah I moved that over there. There's no reason for me to buy another one of those. So we're talking 70 to 150 pre-drilled lid, which looks like that and it's beautiful, is 10 bucks. Then you get the temp twister coil right here. It's a little longer initially. Forgot to put this on and I'll explain why I put these back on, but hey. But yeah, so they're a little longer. That's where you're gonna need the pipe cutting tool. Pipe cutting tool is seven bucks. The little drill bit is $10. So if you spend $10 for that lid, you don't need this $10 tool. Hey, it's a wash. It's a wash. I like that. I would buy the pre-drilled hole. That way you can go back and forth at any time. You can flip the lids, not a big deal. But yeah, looks beautiful. So I have my thermal well in here, which is $10. I have the temp twister, which is 40. Then you're gonna need an insulating jacket. Now, if you have some crazy amount of beach blankets or you have somebody's jacket and they're a big dude, yeah, you might be okay. Personally, I'd spend the money. It's 50 bucks. It's an insulating jacket for the all-rounder. It does not, I know it's got a tie. It does not do a good job on the bottom. Not a big deal. I've got to work around for that. But yeah, this thing is specifically designed and it's thick. It's very thick. It's probably close to an inch thick. I'm going to say at least a half inch, maybe three quarters, but it is designed. I even took this outside Due to that mold thing I got on those straps, I washed it and let it dry in the sun. Looks beautiful. Yeah, extremely durable. Probably more durable than any jacket you'll ever buy for hundreds of dollars. But now, I already mentioned the pipe cutter. I mentioned the drill bit. You're gonna need two of these elbow fittings right here. They're 9.5 millimeter. They are dual tight. They cost about three bucks a piece. You'll need two for exactly that. You see a little when you hook in your cooling you're not doing this straight up thing you don't want to do that just grab them three bucks a piece not a big deal so your costs how much is this going to cost me it's going to cost you a hundred and this is adding everything up and we can you know what we can minus off the ten dollars because you don't need the tool if you get the lid and if you get the lid you don't need the tool so we'll let it wash now Reason I kept these little red things, I need one over here, I didn't do it. Um, I didn't worry too much over here, I probably should, but it's summertime. I keep running little zappers and I spray stuff, but every time I open my door at night, little things that are flying outside come in because it's light in here. They love the light. They're like, oh, the light. Um, I put things like that over things just to keep them out. That's why I keep little stoppers on all my kegs and my taps. 
I don't want things in there. I keep the room very clean. I coat everything outside with bug spray that can kill an ox. Um, inside, I do spray a little bit too, but yeah, if you're somewhere like in a garage or you're somewhere where anything creepy crawly can get in, keeping these that come with it for safety will protect you. Now, when you cut them at the pipe cutter, if you're not familiar with a pipe cutter, you simply put it on the pipe where you want to cut it, you tighten it down nice and snug, and you spin it around two or three times. Tighten it down more, two or three times. Tighten it down more, two or three, two or three, until finally it just falls off. Now, I'm gonna tell you for the twister, you only need a couple inches above. Not about, I think I probably have, what, two and a half, close to three inches above. I'm good, I'm putting them on like that, I'm good. For the thermal well, I do recommend making it tall because if you're doing a half batch, let's say you decide only to do a two and a half or three gallon batch, you can shove that thermal well down so you're in the middle of the liquid, get a better idea of your temperature. If you're doing a full, let's say you're doing a seven gallon batch and a 7.9, I mean, it's gonna be cutting it close, but yeah, you can bring the thermal well up a little so you're right in the middle of the beer. So now, what I didn't tell you was how to fix this hole. Well, I got a couple options. One, if you don't have a lot of humidity issues, you can use one of these. It's from your gym or whatever kind of home gym you might have. And you know you're not using that gym. Just use these. These little matte things, they're great. They work really well. This one has a stain on it, but you know it does the job. Because I'm in Florida, I have a lot of humidity. So beach towels or using that and beach towels under it just to keep that cool in there. And that comes all the way down. It works great but sometimes you're gonna get some moisture and condensation and that will help absorb it. Now, if you're gonna run things, you're gonna need 9.5 millimeter duo tight hosing. The 9.5 fits beautifully in these. If you wanna buy quick disconnects, I bought these on Amazon and I got a good price, they're really nice and they've got the double seal instead of the single, so they're really, really good. They don't get the bad reviews, but these fit in a slightly heated 9.5 and you're gonna to wanna to lock it down, but you could put some 9.5 in between here and here and have quick disconnects for whatever chilling system you're using. Other item is you're gonna to wanna to put foam over, yeah, I know, it all adds up, it does, I'm sorry. But yeah, you're gonna to wanna to put foam over this hose. You can buy this stuff, I got this on Amazon, it was a little bit more, but I like it because I got blue for cold, red for not as cold, it's not hot, but you know, it's not as cold. So I know what's my in and my out liquids. I will say on this stuff, you can cut it either into three pieces or two pieces and run it because the reason being is that I could not get it over that 9.5 millimeter hose without spraying star sand on it. And one of them I had cut in three without star sand, the other one with star sand I cut in half and it worked great. So that's an option. Like I said, I'll leave links below, but yeah, check out the video on this one over here if you're not over here. The other item I almost forgot, thank you for keeping the watch. If, for those who are still on the video, this is a bonus for you. Okay, I don't know if you can see it on this other camera. I got these little blue clips. You're gonna wanna buy those because, oops, and I'm dumping what little bit of glycol that was still sitting in here, but you're gonna wanna buy those clips. The reason being is that this does not pressure seal very well when you do this. You have to make sure that this is pushed down, this is kind of pulled up, and it's sealed and pressure test it. Once you've pressure tested, don't mess with this part. Take it out, put your wart in there, put whatever else, your yeast, whatever you got in there, put this back in there, make sure it's nice and clean, put it back in, seal it up, and you should be fine. I had a problem because I didn't do that on one of them. This one doesn't have the little clips and I couldn't hold any pressure. Anything over one PSI, I was losing it. Over here, where I was using this, and I had the clips in here, I was going to five, six PSI. Anything over that, I was getting a little bit of a leak, but I know that if I'm holding at least five PSI, I don't have any oxygen getting in, and it's sealed. Over here, I was fine too. I was a little concerned, but I was fine. I forgot to pressure test this one. I pressure tested this one before I poured my beer into it or wart to let the yeast convert it to beer. So that is a huge, huge thing you need to be aware of and not everybody thinks about it until it's too late. So something to be aware of. Like I said, I appreciate you. I definitely appreciate you joining me. Don't forget like, subscribe, keep sharing, hit the like. If you got a question, you got something I missed, you got something I didn't think of, let me know because I am always learning and a lot of times I learn from the viewers and the viewers I'm hoping are learning something that I can share that I've learned. Thank you.
Cheers.